Welcome to Computer Science 320, 2014 Winter 2 Midterm 2 Practice Problem Screencast number 6.8. At this point, we're converting our recursive algorithm for MakeTree to use dynamic programming. So, probably the most useful thing to start with is to go back and grab the heart of our recursive algorithm because we're going to use that to build our dynamic programming algorithm. And that is effectively the recurrence. Now, I'm going to delete some of the annotations we put on this in one of our recent solutions to a problem, so it'll be a little easier to see what's going on here. And the core of our recurrence is this piece right here. We are finding the minimum over the set of possible solutions represented by the sum of left cost, right cost, and additional cost for each possible choice of the root. Now, we also noted previously that there is an appropriate ordering that we can use to make dynamic programming work, and that is to start with shorter problems like the ones on the diagonal and work our way up to longer and longer problems. So I'm going to see if I can produce this ordering. I will start with the diagonal, and then I will work up from the diagonal. So for example, starting from this entry down here, I would work my way up to the top and then I will sweep that from left to right. I could also just start all along the diagonal and then do the next entry along the, the, the next diagonal above that and then the next entry and the next entry, but I kind of like the idea of going column by column instead. It feels a little bit easier to think about for me. So I'm going to start low at 1, I'm going to start high at 1, and then the next time I'll start low at 2 and start high at 2, and I'm going to decrement low until I've finished that column, and then I'll start low at 3, start high at 3, and then decrement low until I've finished that column, and so on and so forth until I finish with low starting at 7, in this, in this case it's 7, really it's n, and high starting at 7 or n, and decrementing low until I get to the very last entry that I'm interested in my table. So that's my general idea. And I'm just going to lay that idea out in pieces and then fill in all the pieces until I've got everything taken care of. So one of those pieces was to have a loop that starts low at 1. And let's actually, um, let's not call this low. Let's call this uh, 4 we'll call it the diagonal, for diagonal equals 1 to n. Okay, so that tells me which diagonal entry I'm starting with, because I always start with low and high being the same thing. And then it's low that's actually going to start at diagonal and go down to 1 by 1, so it's going to be diagonal, diagonal minus 1, diagonal minus 2, and so on and so forth, down to 1. And then I'm going to fill in solution low diagonal. So high is just diagonal, it stays diagonal. So the solution entry low diagonal, I'm going to fill in with some value. And then I've got to figure out how to fill that value in. So I've determined the order I'm going to fill solutions in. And now I just need to actually fill the solutions in. Well, this is going to be the minimum over the set of problems. Okay, So this will be all of the problems that we described above in our recurrence, so for all 1 less than or equal to i, oh sorry, not 1, for all low less than or equal to i, less than or equal to diagonal, we want to try each of those as the root, and now we need to make our recursive calls effectively. Now up above, those were really recursive calls. We made a recursive call to find the left cost to make tree helper. We made a recursive call to find the right cost. But down here, they're not recursive calls. They're just lookups in our table. Right? So we're going to um, look up in our solution table 
the left hand side, that keeps low the same and makes high equal to i minus 1, plus the right hand side, that keeps high the same and makes low equal to i plus 1, high remember is just diag, plus the additional cost, which is the sum over low less than or equal to j less than or equal to diag of um, the frequencies of nodes of node j. Okay, so plus that sum minus the frequency of node i. Okay, so all of this then is one of the solutions for the various roots. We want the minimum over all of those solutions. This is obviously not code, but how would we turn it into code? Well, we'd set best so far equal to infinity, and then we'd work our way down. Now, there is one thing we need to handle here, which I have not handled properly yet, and that is that i minus 1 here might actually be less than the smallest index in our array. So I'm going to replace this lookup in the array with a call to a helper function. So I'll just create the helper function. I'm going to put it up in the corner here because I don't really have room uh, further down, and I'm going to make it this solution check function that I've used previously. So instead of actually asking for solution, I'm going to call this function solution check. I'll pass it my solution array. I will pass it an index i and an index j. And I'm going to say if j minus i plus 1 is less than or equal to 0, then I'm going to just return 0. Otherwise, only then will I actually look in the array, so I will return solution i j. Okay. So then I can just replace what I've done down here, indexing into solution, and instead of doing that I will call solution check, and I'll pass it as parameters the indexes that I was going to use before. So this becomes solution check low i minus 1, and this becomes solution check i plus 1, and back. Great. So let's double check that everything worked out OK here, because we kind of jumped into the middle of it. We're calling make tree on nodes. You know, I haven't actually referred to nodes down here, but when I say the frequency of node j here, I could replace this with nodes bracket j dot frequency. And when I say the frequency of node i here, that's just nodes bracket i dot frequency. So that's where I really refer to these things. So I've got, whoops, I've got make tree, and it takes my array of nodes. And then I initialize solution to be a two-dimensional array of length n by n, where solution ij represents the minimum cost of a BST containing all of nodes i up to j, which is just how I'm using it down below, so that's all fine. Uh, I initialize all solution ij for 1 less than or equal to i, j less than or equal to n to infinity. It turns out this line is really totally unnecessary the way we've worked things through. It doesn't cause any harm, but we don't need it because we handle initializing each entry in the solution uh, matrix, the solution array, that we need ourselves. So that's not a problem. And then this is our whole dynamic programming solution. It's quite small, it's quite tight, and easy to work through. We are missing one minor thing. We should actually return the solution at the end. So what is the solution for make tree nodes? All we've done is calculated the table. Which entry in the table is our final solution? Well, we want the solution for all the nodes, from 1 all the way up to n. So that's just going to be return solution brackets 1, n. And actually, to be really careful, I can use solution check instead. And 
this may seem silly to you, because surely we don't have to use solution check for the overall solution. But think it through. It actually can be helpful to use solution check here. So I'm going to return solution check 1n, and as long as the array has at least one element in it, that's just going to look up in the solution array. But regardless, that should do the right thing, and that solves our dynamic programming problem.